All right, now that we got the hood off, we are clear to get this thing hooked up and start pulling the motor out. All right, so this is the setup I got going on. Got my Harbor Freight cherry picker crane here. Picked up this $40 Pittsburgh Automotive load leveler. Seemed worth it to me uh, from Harbor Freight. This guy right here. That's the item number for you. And uh, we're gonna give it a shot pulling the Miata engine. I also picked up for like a couple extra bucks some uh, quick links, 3 sixteenths. They can hold up to 615 pounds or less each. So three in a box, they only need two. I figure that's plenty big enough for this motor, which is definitely not even over 300 pounds for what I have left on it. So I'm gonna get it as low as I can because I have a pretty low clearance here to the ceiling. The car is on the three ton Daytona jack stands at maximum height so I can get the transmission out the bottom. And see if I got enough headroom to get the uh, engine out with this setup. Got the quick links, two links down on the main chain so I can keep this kind of as high as possible. Uh, this little lump underneath the uh, head right here, the valve cover, is my two crescent wrenches locking the cams at their timing position for top dead center. So the last thing I got to do here before removing this engine is take the fuel line off. It's kind of what I left for last and I'm going to take it off right up here. A uh, quick search online brought me to this on Amazon for like $7 prime. So this splits open like that, you clamp it on, you push up, and that releases the tab. And then you should be able to pull straight up. It's that easy. So I'm pretty much ready to lift this thing out now. I've got all the vacuum lines disconnected. Make sure to take pictures of where everything goes before you get too crazy. So the fuel line's disconnected now. It's definitely just holding me up waiting for that part to release the fitting, uh, the clip in the fitting. And now everything with the transmission out is pretty visible and easy to see. Um, so now all I have to do is take out the nuts in that cavity right now. There's one nut on each side for the uh, motor mount. I already broke those loose, so I'm not gonna be fighting any rust there. You can see I got the starter hanging down right there out of the way. So I got the load leveler somewhat centered over these two tabs on the top. Um, use my quick links, two links down just to save as much headroom as I can because I only got eight and a half foot ceilings here and these shop lights hang down at least a foot. All right, the bottom nuts on the motor mounts are both off. So let's give this a try and see what happens. side motor mount just popped out of the subframe. Make sure we're clearing the harness and the starter over here. Looks good. Oh, there comes the other side right out of the hole. I thought they were slotted the whole way down but I guess not. So now the motor is completely free. Pretty good. I'm gonna move the throttle cables out of the way over here. Come on, stay out of the way. There we go. Now I'm gonna hit the steering shaft a little bit, so I'm gonna pump with one hand. I'm going to switch to the head cam view now. Get the motor floating. We've cleared the harness. Everything looks clear back there. Just make sure this exhaust gasket doesn't get hung up and ruined if you plan to re reuse it. Get a few more pumps here. I'm going to go back here. Make sure you're clear of these cooling necks too. Looks like we got a Pull it forward a little bit would probably help. It's not the easiest when you're coming at it from the side. There we go. 
go. All right, we're looking good. We'll get this guy out of the way. The hood prop. We'll pull it forward a little more. Make sure not to crash it into your AC condenser or your radiator, if that's still in there for some reason. And now it looks like we're 100% clear to just to send it to the moon now. All right, so this jack is definitely not pumping its full stroke, so there's something going on with this Harbor Freight jack. So I'm getting very little leverage when I go up, but hopefully it's enough to clear the fender. Alright, so we got enough clearance now and you can see about six inches underneath my shop light here. But she's out, now I can see everything underneath, like your power steering rack lines and check the condition of those and just try to get everything cleaned up. I'm probably going to wheel this car out of the garage and pressure wash the subframe and everything in there once I got everything out right now. And then do the same to the engine here. It's definitely crusty. The iron block is definitely crusty after 160,000 miles, but on the, so to mount the NB2 1.8 VVT engine on the, the stand I bought, the stand was like $68 Amazon Prime. Uh, it's a big red 750 pound three-legged job. I didn't want to spend anything more because all I have to really work on are very light four cylinders and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on an engine stand. So. We'll see how it is for torquing fasteners on it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to torque everything on this besides like the crank pulley uh, bolt. But other than that, I think it's going to do just fine. The bolts I had to buy are, they're M12 by 1.5 and they're 100 millimeter length. I got four of them here. I also grabbed eight aluminum washers that are for a half inch bolt, but they work just fine. Get too crazy with it. I'm going to go ahead and move my AP1 S2000 bumper out of the way. It's a nice day here. One of the last days in January here in upstate New York. And uh, it's like 55 degrees out, so I'm gonna leave that over there. Make more room for activities in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this engine all the way out. Before I get too crazy, I'm not even looking at the exhaust header. It'd be my luck that I crash it into the fender on the other side. Just to summarize what got me to this point here, I thought the rear main seal was leaking because the car would have some drips of oil underneath it after you drove it. Uh, you know, and it progressively got worse and worse. But uh, after taking the transmission off and looking back here, it's clear that it's the carrier and it's not super uncommon after searching online that other people have had this problem. It's really just these half moon seals here around the carrier that dry up after 20 years and get rock hard. Yeah, there's no squish to that at all. And it's like bulging out of the uh, this little peak window here. And all this gray stuff is factory RTV um, that's supposed to go on each side of the gasket as well. And when these dry up, they probably contract and this has been a source of leaky oil on this engine. Um, rear main seal actually is dry underneath where it does the sealing surface, but I'm gonna replace that anyway. Um, you can do this piece when it's still in the car. You don't have to pull the engine. The reason I pulled the engine is for one, I wanted to do it for the first time on a car I've worked on. So this has been a fun experience for me. But two, there's a half moon seal on the rear of the oil pan. And there's also a half moon seal on the front. Being that the bottom on the front of my oil pan was all nasty and grimy and oily, I couldn't tell if it was coming from the front crank seal, the Intake cam, VVT cam seal was definitely leaking because I had a bunch of oil down near the timing chain or the timing uh, belt, I should say. Exhaust cam seal may or may not be leaking. I'm going to replace that anyway as well. But to replace this front one, you need to drop the oil pan. The lovely design of this Mazda Miata means you have to either drop the subframe all the way out 
and I'm dealing with a New York car that has 168,000, so the subframe probably would have been fighting me with seized bolts to drop lower, and going out the top really wasn't that bad with the uh, hood removed and the cherry picker here, so um, really, uh, that's interesting. Okay, so you're slotted on this side and you're not on the other side. But yeah, so the subframe doesn't allow you to drop the oil pan out the bottom like an S2000 you can. You can remove like a, the rear cross brace and drop the oil pan no problem without pulling the engine. I've actually never pulled the engine in that car because it's been so reliable. Um, but the Miata is the first engine I've pulled. So I'm going to go ahead and get it on the stand. What I plan to do here is use these two rear dowels that align the transmission. They're pretty thick steel. And a lot of people online say they don't really come out very easily, so I'm not going to mess with it. That's why I have the um, aluminum washers. I'm going to put an aluminum washer between the steel cylinders on the engine stand and uh, the steel dowel. So if there is something that needs to be sacrificial, crushing, it could be the washer. And then I'm going to put three washers each up here just to space the same thickness that this sticks out. I'm just noticing now this bracket looks like it had something there that broke off. Maybe it rotted off. I don't really know, but it's no longer there. If anyone wants to let me know what the heck that bracket is for, please do so in the comments. I'm definitely still a Miata noob, trying to find my way and navigate my way through this project.